Compassion Fam, you picked the perfect Sunday to join us. We are kicking off a really fun new sermon series called Heroes and Villains. Now, before we get started, let's do something fun. In the comment below, comment your favorite superhero. This could be Marvel. This could be DC. This could be a story in the Bible. And as we're tapping into this new series, you're going to see people in the Bible who have turned from villains to heroes. So we're so excited that you joined us. Please make sure that you like, share, and comment this stream. And let's go ahead and have some fun with this.
surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. And I will make room for you. Now, this is my surrender. 
this is my surrender.
lifted up, with our hands lifted high today. Let's sing this out. I don't want it if you're not in it. I just, I don't want it if you're just one here. Hallelujah. You're all Just a couple seconds more. Just continue to pour out your love on the Father today. Oh God, we're desperate for you. Come and move and have your way, God. We pour out our love on you. Yes. Because you're all we want. You're all we need. And nothing, nothing else can satisfy. Like you do, my God. Come on, somebody needs to hear that today. Nothing else can satisfy my heart like you do, my God. Yes. Oh. We're so desperate for you. We're so desperate for you. Somebody better praise him today. God, you're worthy, 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 worthy. You are God. are so thankful for the way that you give here at Compassion Church. From the money, to the way you serve, to the gifts that you use, they all play a part in furthering the kingdom. I promise you we couldn't do this without you, so thank you. As we're giving here, we just want to make it as easy as possible. So a couple ways that you can give are one, Go to CompassionChurch.cc slash give and you can give securely there online or you can text 84321. Make sure you text give and then select Compassion Church Wichita Falls. Jesus, we just thank you so much for what you're doing here at Compassion Church. I thank you that you are stirring up hearts of givers, not just givers of our finances, but givers of our gifts and our talents and our callings. God, I just thank you for rising that up within us. We pray that you will take this offering and you will stretch it farther than we could ever imagine. God, we just give it to you and we ask you to come in and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, Compassion. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? I don't understand the laughs. 
This is my new attire for compassion. You dress to feel the way you want to feel. And I want to be a hero. We start a new sermon series today called Hero versus Villain. Who are you? Turn to your neighbor and say, are you a hero or are you a villain? Turn back to your neighbor and say, it doesn't really matter what you think I already know. I think I look good in this, don't y'all? Now, if I look like Little Red Riding Hood, we got a problem. We got a big problem. Today, I want to talk to you about heroes. We just got back. Me and my wife flew back in late, 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 late. In fact, it wasn't Friday night. It was Saturday morning. Uh, We just got back from New York City. I had meetings down there all last week, and I've been to New York City, and As you go to Times Square, there's all these superheroes walking around. Spider-Man and Batman and the Hulk. Wonder Woman. They look like heroes. The problem is, looks can be deceiving. Because they're not really heroes walking around and taking care of and protecting New York City. They're individuals walking around trying to, well, they want to take a picture with you, not because of you, but because they want to make some money. And I can tell you after what one of them said to my wife a couple of years ago, they ain't no heroes. I won't tell you what they said because I can't use that kind of language in the house of the Lord. Actually, I shouldn't use that kind of language anywhere. But see, really, they were dressed up like heroes, but that didn't make them heroes. Can can I say something to you today? Just because they wear a cape doesn't mean they're a hero. For the rest of this month, I'll be talking about heroes and villains. How sometimes you're the hero and some of you are the villains. and How sometimes you can be a hero and a villain at the same time. I want to tell you a story today. In fact, I want you to look with me at Esther chapter 7, beginning with verse 1. Extra, Esther chapter 7, begin with verse 1. I'm about to share a story with one of the greatest heroes of the Bible. And, and let me tell you why she's one of the greatest heroes of the Bible. She would end up saving almost a million people. She would stop what could have been the first Holocaust. One woman, one shy woman, one beautiful woman who would find her inner hero by the power of her God and how God had set it up for her to become a hero. And because she was willing, accepted how God would change her life. Let's look. So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet. And as they were there there drinking wine on the second day, the king asked Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom. He offers her half the kingdom. For some of you who have been divorced and lost half of everything, it was because of Queen Esther. (laughs) Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition and spare my people this is my request for I and my people have been sold 
to be destroyed and annihilated. If you had merely sold, if we had been merely sold as a male or female slaves, I would have kept quiet because no such stress would justify disturbing the king. But Xerxes asked Queen Esther, who is he? Where is he? The man who has dared to do such a thing, Esther said, an adversary, an enemy, this vile Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. The king got up in rage. I love this. I don't know why. The, uh, there are things that are funny to me. This is so funny. Listen to this right here. The king got up in rage, left his wine. How good was that wine that the Bible mentions that he actually dared to get up and leave it behind? That's some good stuff. And went out into the palace garden. But Haman, realizing that the king had already decided his fate, stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. Just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. The king exclaimed, Will he even molest the queen while she is with me in the house? As soon as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the word that we're about to receive. I pray that every heart and every mind to be open to receive, God, what you've got in store. And Lord, let not one, not one leave this house the same way that they came, but be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name, Lord, amen and amen. Let me tell you the story. The story is, is that most of those who had been exiled and taken into Babylon had now returned home. The Persians had come in, the Medes had come in and, and saved them and told them they could go back to their land. Only about, we would say, I don't know, 50,000 of the Jewish people went back to Jerusalem. About a million stayed back. This is the scene that we find. Now, what, what happens is the king here, Xerxes, what, he, what he's doing is he had had a banquet. And why is that the banquet? He had a beautiful queen. Vashti is her name. And, well, he sends for the queen. Will you, someone, go get the queen? When they get there to get her, she says, no. Now, for us today, like me, I'd be used to that. Come here, honey. I ain't coming there. You come here. If I don't ever forget the first day that uh, my wife, Miss Fern, used to help us. She was my, the assistant here. And, and when she had stepped down, Laurie stepped in. And I knew the days had changed because Miss Fern would, would always help me. She'd get coffee for me, all that. And so I yelled out to Laurie one day. I said, Laurie, will you give me some coffee? Go oh, get your own coffee. I thought, oh, how times have changed. But... And this time with the king, that wasn't good. So the king called all his advisors together and said, what do I do? And they said, well, you can't let this happen. If you do, then every, every woman, every queen, every, every noble's wife will think it's all right to disobey their husband. So you got to make a decision. Now, he could have killed her, but what he ended up doing was is banishing her. She would no longer be the queen. So what he does, he's hurt, he's upset. He puts out there that he wants a new queen. And it goes all throughout the land that I'm looking for a new queen. Well, everybody comes looking to be the queen. Now, the funny thing is there was a 12-month cleansing and beautifying process. If it took you 12 months to get beautified, you weren't ever going to be pretty. I'm just saying. I mean, if someone walk in, they go, oh, no, nah, you're a 13-monther. You can leave. Now, there was a man that was a part of the kingdom that was a part of the court. His name was Mordecai. Mordecai had raised a girl because her parents had died when she was young. She, it was her, his cousin. And he would take this girl, her name was Esther, and she, he would bring her in and raise her. And when this decree went out that the king was looking for a new queen, in other words, he would bring her to the court. She was beautiful. Just like my wife is beautiful. She was beautiful. 
And the Bible says that the person that was in charge of the harem, well, she found favor with him. And eventually she would go before the king after the 12-month beautifying process. And she would find favor with the king. In this process, something begins to happen. Mordecai, who is Jewish and so is also Esther, although they don't know, what happens is Haman, who was a man there, gets promoted to the second level or the, the second below the king. And he becomes a little fool of himself. When I mean fool of himself, what he wants is wherever he goes, he wants people to bow to him. You ever met someone like that? They want to be the center of attention. They want everyone to bow to them. They want everybody to think they're the greatest. They want to be the bomb diggity, the center of attention in the room. That's Hammond. Well, what happens is Mordecai must have known Hammond and didn't think much about him. So every time Hammond would come in the room and everybody else is like, oh, Hammond, oh, great and mighty one. Mordecai's like, He gets back to Haman. He ain't pleased. He gets mad. And he goes to the king and says, there are a people here that are coming against you. Now, the problem is funny how we try to reverse things. See, Mordecai had raised up to where he was because he had actually stopped assassination against the king. Then what happens is Haman comes and and tells the king, there's a people here that are coming against you. We better do something about them. And he gives Haman the right to kill all of them, including Mordecai, not knowing. So Mordecai tells Queen Esther one day, listen, you've got to get to the king. If you don't get to the king, we're in trouble. He's going to kill all of us. Esther sends back a message, and Mordecai says, you don't understand. I can't. To go before the king without being invited is sheer death. He can kill you. If I were to just walk in and say, hey, king, what's up? I don't know if they did that back then. What's up? I'm tired of that look. My wife just sits on the road, front row and looks at me as if I'm stupid. Does anybody have a wife that does that to them? I'm the only one. Okay, then. That's true. Yeah, you guys are smarter not to raise your hand. Each side, every one of you wanted to raise your hand, but you're like, oh, my God. (laughs) But see, Mordecai says, do not be misled. You're a Jew too. And if this happens, you too will die. She's afraid. She's scared. But the Bible says that Queen Esther puts on her royal attire and she shows up at the palace to see the king. I can only imagine the moment that she walks in, her heart's probably beating fast, probably a little sweat going down and running down her eyeliner, messing up her makeup. She's a little nervous, but she walks in and she sees the king and in that split second, what's going to happen? And in that moment, the king puts out a scepter saying, come on in. I tell you this story because you don't understand what a hero she was and how she would change lives that day. There's a few things I'm going to share with you today, and I want you to write them down. Number one is this. You don't recognize heroes by their capes, but their capability to recognize God's providence. You don't recognize a hero by their capes, Let me tell you why. How many know that God is at work in our everyday life? God is at work in our everyday life. In fact, if you go back and read the story, God had been setting all of this up. Yes, a tragedy had brought them here, the the death of a mother and a father, but yet God had slid this woman into the life of Mordecai, this God-fearing man. And then what had happened is, then God had used Mordecai to bring her before the king. And eventually what God's going to do through his providence, his sovereignty, God's then going to put her in a place to where she can save the people of Israel. How do you recognize a hero of God? They always understand that God's providence is always at work in their life. 
Some things that happen in your life are not an accident. Some things that transpire in your everyday routine are there put by God in your life as an opportunity to bless the kingdom. You saw Josh on the screen today. Josh is one of those, it always seems God opens doors for him. In fact, I'll never forget years ago there was a flood and there's Josh Hand and he turns out of the flood and ends up saving a woman's life and he makes it on TV and it's just like, that's just Josh. It's just him. It's like God's providence, God's sovereignty is always working in his life. Have you ever found yourself talking to someone, having a conversation, and all of a sudden you thought, you just for a second, this isn't an accident, but it was God working? This idea that God's up in heaven and he has nothing to do with our everyday lives is a lie from the pits of hell. I pray every day when I wake up, God, let me today be led by your providence and your sovereignty to what you've got planned for my life. That God, that I may be used to help someone, that I may be used to take care of someone. See, God wants you to understand that he is there. In fact, half the time, God is right there trying to tap you on your back to show you that something is about to happen, but you're ignoring him, not listening to him. Focus on the wrong things, allowing sin in your life. And God is saying, if you'll just stop for a second, I've got something that I want to do through you and in you if you'll just listen to me. See, as we look throughout the chapters, chapters 1 and 2 of Esther are all about the providence of God. It's all about the, the God behind the scenes. And let me say this, God is behind the scenes, amen? And let me also say this to you. God wants to use you to accomplish his will. But if God can't use you, he'll use somebody else. If God comes to Brian and says, Brian, I'm going to use you today to speak a word into someone's life that has been looking for an answer to whatever they've been going through, then what God's going to do, if Brian says no, then God will move to Mona. Brian, you are my first choice, but Mona's my second choice. But that's all right. Mona will get the blessing. You'll get the disappointment. See, God is at work every moment, every day, every second of our life. And heroes recognize the sovereignty and the providence of God. Wake up every day and say, God, today, show me your plan. God, today, let me be sensitive to your will. God, I pray today that my spiritual eyes will be open. That, Lord, when you say go, go. When you say leave, leave. It happens all the time in my life. In fact, can I be honest with you? I'm always looking for it. I am always looking for the providence of God in my life. Show me, Lord. Lead me, God. Number two, write this down. You don't recognize heroes by their ability to fly, but by God's favor on their lives. If you're a hero of the faith, God's favor is on your life. In fact, you look at Esther chapter 2, verse 8. He said, she pleased him and won his favor. Esther 2.15 says this, Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. Esther 5.2 says this, and he was pleased with her and held out to her the golden scepter. And then you go to Esther chapter 5 verse 8, he says, if the king regards me with favor, if it pleases the king to grant, and it says this in the latter part, then I will answer the king's question. Here's the thing. If God's providence is all around us and we will step into God's providence, then God's favor will be on your life. God, what is God's favor? He opens doors that no man can open. He closes doors that no man can close. See, God's favor, let me say this. God's favor is not for you to get a parking spot at Walmart. Who's ever said that before? Oh, look at God's favor. <laughs> he got the first. God doesn't care where you park at. In fact, some of you need to park further back and walk. <laughs> just saying. We just got back from New York City, and you walk everywhere you go in New York City. And finally, one day, my thing popped up and said, record walking or something like that on my watch. 
And then it said, you're fat, walk more. <laughs> yeah, record steps. That's what it said. Who said that? I don't know who said that. You know, record, it said record steps. I'm like, wow, I mean, that's impressive. It ain't going to happen after this week, <laughs> but impressive. See, God's favor, if you're in God's providence, a true hero of the faith also has God's favor. God's favor to protect you. God's favor to open up doors for you. Sometimes where there's no rhyme or reason that you should have been the one that got the promotion, that was God. No rhyme or reason that you should have got that blessing, that's God. No rhyme or reason that you should have got that spouse because they sure look better than you. That's God. See, God's favor is upon those who walk in the providence of God. See, all I'm doing this week is setting you up so you can see. When you look from the outside, how does a hero look? He doesn't wear a cape. He doesn't wear tights. He, he, doesn't wear, he doesn't fly. The way that you see a hero of the faith of God, a hero of God's kingdom, is someone who knows and recognizes the providence and the sovereignty of God, who searches and seeks after it. But also you recognize a hero of the faith because there always seems to be favor on their life. That God opens doors. That God does things that he doesn't do for others. That's the favor of God. The last one. You don't recognize heroes by their tights, but they're trusting God. I had to make a decision today. Was I going to wear the cape or tights? I think I made the right decision. Man, Wait a minute. All those claps are a little bit offensive. See, the moment that Esther made her way to see the king, she knew that it may be the last walk she ever took. When Esther stood at the door and saw the king, and the king saw her, she knew it could be her last breath. True heroes, and let me say this. A hero is not someone that is fearless. Being brave is not the absence of fear. It's this decision to push through the fear and trust God. We went on the, uh, the World Trade Center. We decided to go to the very top and see it. I really didn't want to go. I'm afraid of heights. It's 1,700, yeah, 1,767 feet high. 102 floors. The elevator went 23 miles an hour. Oh, no lie. I'm not lying. It did. It went 23 miles an hour. It still almost took us a minute to get to the top at 23 miles an hour. And I got to the top. Oh, Lord, if there had been a spider up there with that height, I would have died. The view was gorgeous. You can see all of New York. In fact, they said you can see three states from up there. You know why I went up there? It made me mad that I was afraid to go up there. I didn't go up there because I lacked fear to go up there. I went up there despite the fear. If you're going to wait to the fear some size in your life to do something for God, you're going to be waiting a long time. God wants men and women of God that are heroes that will step out despite the fear and make their journey to the destination that God has. That's a hero. I tell people all the time, the greatest fear for me is the moment that I leave that chair to walk up on the stage. I've been pastor over 25 years and I'm still nervous every time I walk up. 
But despite the fear, I make my way toward the destiny. Despite the fear, I still make my way toward the destiny. Can I say something to you? If you are a hero of the faith, then you recognize and realize the sovereignty and the providence of God that is going on around you every hour. If you are a hero of the faith, then because you recognize God's providence and God's sovereignty, then you trust God. You have faith in God. And God's favor will always be on you. See, God's favor is His way of opening the doors for your next journey, your next season, your next blessing. See, God wants you to recognize the providence and His sovereignty because God's will is at work. And when His will is at work and you're in the middle of God's will, then God's favor will be on your life. And I will trust God. The story ends that he gets upset the king and he says who is this who did it she goes I like O Esther she said that vile Hammond right there and Hammond freaks out the king gets so mad that he stands up and leaves that good wine behind and the Bible says he walks out in the garden I, I can see him now he's like oh mm, oh I'm gonna hurt him and he walks back in. The Bible tells us that Hammond is laying over the couch, holding on to Queen Esther, saying, Oh, make him stop. Don't let him do it. Make him talk about of it. The king says, Really? You're trying to make out with my wife right here in the middle up with the king still here? And then I know that Hammond said, I'm dead. Here's the end of the story. See, Hammond had put a pole outside his house that he was going to hang Mordecai on. And one of the servants, because when he said, what should I do with Hammond? He said, I guess I'm one of the servants, which, you know what? If you most likely don't like someone, there's a big chance others don't either. And one of the servants spoke up real quick that probably didn't like Hammond, who had been talked down by him and put down by him and said, hey, I got an idea. He put a pole outside his house to hang Mordecai on. Let's put him on it. King goes, like the idea, buddy. I like the way you think. And they go and stick Hammond on the pole. Let me tell you what that means. What the enemy will try to destroy you with, God will always turn it around and destroy the enemy with it. I want you to stand with me. What an amazing God we serve. Let me tell you how at the end of this month you can be a hero. Simple way. We're going to have Superhero Sunday coming up in this month, the last Sunday of the month. All we're asking you to do is invite your hero, school teacher, neighbor, fireman, principal, coach, someone that's been a, made an impact on your life, and we're going to honor them here. Pastor, why is that so important? Because that hero that you invite that day may give their heart and life to Christ, and you're a hero of the faith. Amen? In fact, we said last week, if you invite, everybody invites a hero to the service, you get to put your name in a drawing to win two Dallas Cowboy tickets. One for you, one for me. No, you one for you and one for you to take your hero with you. Can I tell you that being a hero is not always doing the big things. In fact, being a hero is all the little small things you do put together. You could be a hero that day just by inviting a friend, a hero in your life to come to service. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. If you're here today and say, Pastor, I want to be a hero of the faith. 
Not a hero in the eyes of people of this world, but a hero in God's eyes. What, know that I'm doing what God's called me to do. I want to be a hero of the faith. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Lord, I pray for every hand that is raised. And I ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, make them a hero of the faith. Give them the ability to see the providence and the sovereignty of God in their life every day. I pray that, Lord, as they see your sovereignty and walk in your providence, that, God, your favor would be upon them. And no matter where the journey may take them, their trust will always be in their God. Their trust will always be in their God. With every head bowed, every eye closed, one last question. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you would like to give your heart and life to Him, today is the day of salvation. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner in need of God's grace and wonderful love. Believe that He is the Son of the living God, died on a cross, who rose on the third day. And with your mouth confess and more even life, He shall be saved. If that's you today and you'd like to give your heart and life to Christ, no one's looking, just you, me, and the Lord, then I want you to raise your hand right now. Is there anyone this morning? I've had one raise their hand, give God praise. Say this prayer with me. Say it loud. Say it proud as there's one new name been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Say, Dear Jesus, I invite you to my heart and into my life. Forgive me of all my sins and all my ways. I repent and I come to you and ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life forever and ever. Amen. Give God praise. We are so happy that you joined us today. Here at Compassion, we value family, which means we value you. If there's any way that we can be praying for you and believing with you for something, please make sure that you let us know. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you here next Sunday.